Our first section is about categorical and quantitative variables. So we're going to start with a few important definitions. The first two you will see written everywhere. You don't really need to memorize the definitions, but I'll define them anyway. So the first one we have is, is data, which actually is the plural of the word datum, um, but we usually call it data because we almost always have more than one thing. So data are facts or numbers that give us information. So um, you'll hear a lot of different definitions. It's, it's not the easiest word in the world to define. This is mainly just my definition. So you might hear other definitions that you like better. That's fine. Um, but just know that you will see it often. The next word is actually the name in the class, which is statistics. So statistics is uh, basically the study of data. Now, for this one, you will actually hear it defined slightly different later on in the class, but um, this is the general definition that you'll just be using for now. So the next one is a variable, and variable you've probably heard in the past as being a letter that represents a number, but in this class you'll, you'll see it a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to call it a characteristic of a person or thing. So I think it'll be easiest to understand when you actually see examples. The same thing with the next two categorical and quantitative variables. These two you do need to know and you do need to remember and you need to be able to identify them. And I'll give you an example where we do identify them. So a categorical variable is going to be something that places an individual or a object into a group. A quantitative is going to be something that actually takes a numerical value. So um, I'll give you some examples in just a minute. Places. So for example, if you have a person and you want to know uh, what their gender is, they can either be male, male or female. That is a categorical variable. So it's going to place them into one of those two groups. Now on the other hand, if you have a quantitative variable, that would be something like knowing the person's age. So you will often have a numerical value and that's going to be quantitative. Now. The key thing about that is that in addition to being numerical values, it's going to be a quantitative is going to be something where it makes sense to do numerical operations. The main one being the average. So where an average makes sense. So for example, if I were to take a random group of people throughout the country and find out their area codes, the area codes would be a number like 805 or 602. However, if I were to take the average of all of those area codes, it would give me absolutely nothing of use. So in that case, it would actually be categorical. Now, on the other hand, if I find somebody's age or height, or any other thing like that where if I were to take an average of a bunch of people um, and it would make that would give me a good average that would make sense. So the, uh, the last thing that it actually doesn't come up in the AP textbook but I still want you to kind of recognize this word it does come up in the CP textbook um, but I want both groups to know it. So a binary variable is a variable, is a categorical variable that has two possible answers or two possible categories. You might have heard the word binary before. Binary, um, the word bi generally has to do with two. And 
An example of this would be if I were to go around asking people, do you have a pet? The answers would be either yes or no. So there would be two possibilities. Now, the last thing that's important is individuals, which you'll also see referred to as observational units. I think it mentions individuals in the AP textbook and observational units in the CP textbook. Just know that in this class, I will be using those interchangeably. I will attempt to um, call them individuals in the AP class and observational units in the CP just to be consistent with your book. But just know that I might not always do that. If I interchange those, don't be worried. It's the same exact thing. So individuals are in, or observational units are going to be the people or things that are described by data. So you're not always going to have people as your individuals. Sometimes you'll have animals. Sometimes you'll have something random like M&Ms. So it, it could be pretty much anything. So we're going to do an example for this section. And I gave you a data table of five randomly selected U.S. residents from a recent census. So I'm gonna, we're going to answer some questions about them. The first thing we want to know is who are the individuals in this case? So sometimes you'll have um, a column on the left-hand side where it actually names the people or something, but in this case it doesn't. The individuals is who we want to know about, and in this case it's U.S. residents. And if you want to be more specific, you can say actually um, exactly what they tell you up there. You can say five randomly selected U.S. residents if you want to. So then they're going to ask you which are categorical var variables. So um, you're just going to go through and figure out. The easiest way to do it is um, if they're not numbers, they're definitely going to be categorical. For example, state, gender, marital status are all categorical. So those are the first things that we, that we have there. The next thing you need to make sure of is that there's no um, quantity, there's nothing that's a number that actually is a categorical. And in this case, there aren't. So our quantitative variables are things that if you were to take an average of all of these five people, you would get something mean meaningful. So we have number of family members, age, income, and travel time. Those are all our quantitative. And then the next question I'm going to ask you is which variable is binary? And the only one here that's binary is actually gender. Sometimes they'll ask a yes or no questions, which will generally be binary unless they have an I don't know option. But in this case, the only one is gender. And I actually got this table. Um, I pulled it out of uh, the teacher's guide for my book, and then I realized it was missing something really important. So. The one important thing that it's missing that you always, always need to state is for your quantitative variables, you need units. And some of them are going to be like not helpful for units, for example, number of family members, we know that's going to be two family members, six family members, but something like age is always good to have. However, since it's people, we know it's years. Income is always helpful. We don't know if this is like euros or, or dollars, although since we're working in the U.S., um, we can assume it's just your U.S. dollars. Travel time to work, another one we, we are assuming that it's minutes, but it doesn't hurt you to say that. So I would say make sure that whenever you make a table like this, for the things that might be uh, debatable, definitely always put units. So the last question I added, um, suppose the table also 
also listed each person's social security, num security number. Would that be quantitative or categorical? So you can think about this for a second. And hopefully you would say that it would be categorical. The reason is because if you were to take the average of a bunch of different people's social security numbers, it would really not give you anything meaningful. So the reason is that it doesn't give a meaningful average.